All right, guys, welcome to the audit. This is for the um, April 3rd to 7th. And I'm going to go over what we saw in the market this week. I'll start with a, uh, a quick overview of the S&P 500. I'm going to use the daily chart, and I'm going to use this uh, five-minute chart stretched out over a five-day period. And uh, I'll just start by saying that uh, if you look at uh, this week's session in its entirety, you can see that... Uh, from Monday to today's close, the market was quite choppy. It was quite range bound with the exception of this um, quick breakout and breakdown on Wednesday. Uh, and you can see that, um, I mean, last week was pretty decent. This was a nice rally over here um, up into Friday. And that uh, that comes off of, uh, this comes off the back of a, uh, of a downslide from the week before. So last week was nice, and then it sort of, again, bounced right through here. I mean, depending upon how you look at this, there are a number of things in play that you can see here. I mean, first and foremost on this daily chart, what I'm, uh, what I'm seeing are some key levels of support and resistance. And uh, we've got this resistance level up here at just about two, uh, 240 on the SPY. And we've also got uh, some moving average support uh, offered by this 50-day simple moving average. We got a little bit of, of resistance up through here from both the 9-day and the 20-day moving average. And you can see both yesterday and today, uh, price did move up to that 20-day uh, moving average, but uh, for whatever reason, couldn't break it. Wednesday, same thing. We went well past that 20-day moving average, but then came back in that range. And you can see that that 50-day uh, held price action uh, perfectly. So uh, things that we're seeing here is we've got this resistance. We've got this sort of vague approximate double top area with price action coming off. Uh, we've got the um, support of the 50-day moving average. If we look at just like the last two weeks, though, for example, one could argue that there is sort of a flag in play. Um, you know, so ugh, it's maybe-ish. So we got... Uh, just sort of through here. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a weak looking flag, but nonetheless, uh, you do, you, you know, one, like I said, one could argue that you've got this uh, flag right here that uh, is getting ready to uh, potentially break out or break down. And today uh, being Friday, this, this uh, daily candle here uh, suggests that, well, this closed on a day where there was very, 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 uh, very, very high level of uh, indirection. So, no bulls, no bears. Nobody controlled this. This was a sideways uh, trending market today, and this is just where we sat. On this five-day period, or this five-day, uh, five-minute chart, uh, if you look at it, you can see um, a relatively decent um, head, complex head and shoulders construction uh, right here. I mean, you've got uh, a shoulder. One could argue that's a shoulder, a head, uh, a shoulder, and a shoulder. And uh, complex head and shoulders uh, are known to break down from time to time and be uh, extremely bearish when they do actually break down. So, again, you know, just a couple things that I'm looking at that I'm not too excited about is the fact that, well, we've been range bound all week with the exception of this breakout and breakdown after this double top on Wednesday. Um, if you look at the pattern over the last week, you are getting sort of a head and shoulders uh, break to our um, pattern and uh, you know with that there's a couple ways that this thing could uh, potentially break out obviously if it breaks down uh, this thing could roughly move from let's see 236 down to 234 if this thing broke down it could it could break down to as low as like maybe uh, 232 uh, and a half or something like we could come off about two bucks on the spy and uh, if it broke out, well, then uh, what we'd be wanting to do is, is look out to take out this um, 237.38 level and uh, allow us to move up to uh, previous highs in that 239.80 um, area. So that's kind of really what we'd like to see. Um, I mean, if it just stays within this uh, 234.30, 236.00 band, it's just going to continue to consolidate and trend sideways if we take out uh, the lower level of that band or the higher level we're going to be offered um, uh, some direction so it's tough to call it's tough to say what will happen um, like I said one could say that this is a flag if this does break out I mean uh, 231 
to 236. You've got roughly about a $5 move. If the flag gets broken out, this thing could um, end up just marginally uh, taking out 239.80 and setting a high. If it decides to come off, um, it would come down, uh, like I said, a couple of bucks at least. So that's what I'm looking at on the SPY. Um, because I'm very much a day trader and I'm, I'm not looking to swing trade and I'm just looking to do uh, intraday stuff, um, you know, I just kind of, I look at the market first thing in the morning to try and gauge uh, what the direction is for the day and see if I can use that in my favor when putting on a um, an intraday position. Uh, and so what we can do is from here, that's kind of what I'm seeing on the SPY. I mean, we've got previous high at uh, roughly uh, 240 bucks. Uh, we've got this two week flag that's kind of playing itself out with uh, 50 day moving average support. And, um, you know, on a larger or a longer time frame, um, over a five day period, five minute charts, you've got this head and shoulders, um, complex head and shoulders that uh, could potentially uh, break down and cause uh, long positions a bit of harm. Uh, so, with that, I want to get into INNL. And this was something that I, I traded and posted on um, Monday, I believe. And this was our um, trade of the week. This was a really, really big move. Um, what we saw was uh, we saw some pre-market volume uh, come in. And uh, we, well, not pre-market volume. We saw a nice uh, volume push here on the, uh, the five-minute chart on Monday. And uh, what I was looking to do here was uh, when that thing bumped up, I was just making a note of what uh, intraday high was. Uh, and then what I was looking to do was find myself an entry. And what I love to do is I use the uh, Fibonacci retracement tool and I'm looking at that 61.8 uh, level. I mean, if you've taken the demand course or mentoring with me, you know that uh, I love to uh, get into these pullbacks uh, and I use the, um, the Fibonacci retracement tool as a uh, as an entry tool to get in and what I'm usually looking at is the uh, anywhere from 38.2 percent to uh, 61.8 percent this is the zone that I'm looking at and what I really need to see is my indicators like the stochastics and the MACD histogram um, all bottoms up and the uh, signal line uh, about to uh, to get taken out uh, to the upside so it's sort of a bottoms up indicator uh, combo setup and uh, what you'll see is that I'm offered that here. The stochastics uh, represents oversold, and we're down at that 61.8% uh, retracement level. Uh, the signal line does get uh, crossed up, and you can see that the um, the buying momentum starts to enter, and this thing does go uh, up to uh, about a buck 31. It trends sideways, and then the following morning, we're offered confirmation on a breakout of previous day's high. It comes back into its band, but you can see by now we're we're already in this trade, and um, stop losses are starting to get moved up uh, right behind price action, and then this thing uh, rocketed up, and uh, we were out of this thing Wednesday, and uh, pretty much out of this out of the gate uh, when the market opened. So this was a huge trade. If you go to uh, the YouTube channel, which I hope you're subscribing to by now, uh, you will see that we put this trade on. And I put this trade up as a trade of the week uh, because on this, uh, this was a monster move. There's, uh, there's no two ways about it. I, you know, on average, I'm usually, usually seeing about a 15 to 20% uh, uptick in my, my um, intraday positions. And uh, this was just one of those monsters. So I uh, was a big fan of that trade and um, made it the trade of the week. But I'm still going to review it because it, uh, it is part of this week's audit. Um, and then a pre-market mover that I, uh, I was looking at, um, that came in off the scan and a couple of my uh, past students were trading this, uh, my good pal, Ken, he, uh, he was trading this as well. And he mentioned that uh, he did well on this was N V F Y. So this showed up on a, uh, on a scan that I, uh, I put together ages ago and, um, we got in or I didn't get in, but, uh, couple guys were getting in on this one uh, on uh, this would have been Thursday and uh, what we did is we had this gap up a gap and go trade and so essentially what we were looking at was this thing gapped up uh, 
pre-market pulled back and held that pre-market high. And then we had a, uh, a breakout right here of 207 into the market. Now on this particular position, um, the mode of trading this would have been getting in around that 212 level and uh, taking that thing up into the uh, 260 range uh, where uh, would have been selling out of this position. So those were the trades on the week. And uh, that is pretty much a quick summary of the audit and what we were getting up to. Um, so that uh, that was NVFY. Again, um, I wasn't in this, and uh, a couple students were in this. This was off the uh, pre-market um, intraday scanner that I got put together, and uh, a couple of guys did really really well on this. And we, uh, I mean, I personally uh, passed on this trade. So. But that was the uh, that was the trade on this guy, and um, all in all, again, because of the way the S and P uh, and the spy has been playing themselves out, uh, there hasn't been a whole ton of stuff. This week was a bit light for trades. Uh, last week in this area was light for trades, and the week before that, because there was a big sell-off, and uh, people were sort of lightening up on. Uh, going long, we uh, we also had sort of a challenge getting into a bunch of trades. So when the environment starts to move more towards the upside and we get these sort of momentum legs, right, like this leg up, uh, when we get these momentum-based positions, uh, you'll start to see in the future that these uh, these trades become a little bit more commonplace and I'll have more to report on. But when the, when the market gets choppy like this, and you've got a week, one week down, one week up, and then one week kind of, you know, sideways in a range. It becomes more challenging to trade these. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at uh, info at jlewistrading.com. If you're uh, watching this, um, you, you're, you know, you're more than welcome to head over to uh, the J. Lewis Trading YouTube channel and check out some of the other videos that I've posted. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and become a member. And if you have any questions, again, email me directly at jlewistrading.com. Uh, today it is 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and this is the audit for the J. Lewis Trading team for April 3rd to April 7th. Thanks for watching.